Shalom, beloved. I welcome you to a program designed to bless the Master of Divine Mysteries, Yehovah, Yeshua, Jesus. It is my delight to proclaim this blessing. Borchu et Adonai Hamevorach. Blessed is the Lord who is blessed. Borchu et Adonai Hamevorach Leolam Vaed. Blessed is the Lord Yehovah who is blessed forever and forever. Amen. Come with me now, beloved, as we go back in time to the days of King Ahasuerus. In the third year of his reign, this mighty and powerful king made a feast for all of his princes and noblemen. It was then that he revealed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the splendor of his excellent majesty for many days. And to this he added yet another feast in the court of the garden of his palace. The palace was lavishly adorned in colors of white, blue, and purple, with couches of gold and silver on a mosaic pavement of alabaster and turquoise with white and black marble. The royal wine flowed in golden vessels according to the openness of the king's generous hand, and all of his officers could drink according to each man's pleasure. On the last day of this exquisite feast, the king commanded his seven eunuchs to bring his beautiful Queen Vashti before him, wearing her royal crown in order to show her beauty to everyone attending, for she was beautiful to behold. But Queen Vashti refused to come. Therefore the king was furious and his anger burned within him. He knew her wrong behavior would have great influence on all other women. It was then decided that her royal position would be given to another, for Vashti could come no more before the king. The king's servants then brought beautiful virgins before him. Each of them prepared to meet him after six months of oil of myrrh and six months of perfumes, preparations for beautifying women. But there was only one who pleased the king, only one who obtained grace and favor in his eyes only one who captured his heart. She was lovely and beautiful, a young woman who was orphaned as a child, a Jewess whose identity was hidden. The king loved her more than all the other women, more than all the virgins. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen. Her name was Esther. 
This was a mysterious but fitting name for one whose identity had not been revealed. For Esther's name means, I will be hidden. There are scriptures, beloved, that tell us of the blessing of being hidden in God. The psalmist sings to God in Tehillim, Psalm 17, 8. Keep me as the apple of thine eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings from the wicked who oppress me, from the deadly enemies who surround me. In Tehillim Psalm 27.5, the word speaks to us. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Tehillim Psalms 3120 declares, You shall hide them in the secret place of your presence. From the plots of man, you shall keep them secretly in a pavilion, a shelter from the strife of tongues. Blessed be Yehovah, for he has shown me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. And in Psalm 64, 1 and 2, the psalmist sings, Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity, who sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words that they may shoot in secret at the blameless. And the Lord's response to the wicked beloved he shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall be wounded, for he will make them stumble over their own tongue. One day Queen Esther heard of an evil plot to kill her Jewish people. It seemed that an evil anti-Semite named Haman, had convinced the king to destroy and annihilate all of them. Queen Esther was in great distress. What could she do? It was then that her adoptive father, Mordechai, sent a command to her, go to your husband, the king. Plead before him for your people. Though Queen Esther feared the king's response, she was a woman of courage. She knew then that her identity would have to be revealed to the king for the sake of her people. After fasting for three days and nights, she put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the king's palace. And when the king saw her, she found favor in his sight. 
and he held out to her the golden scepter that was in his hand. Esther drew near and touched the scepter. Malach Esther Amalka Uma Bakashatech What do you wish, Queen Esther? He said. What is your request? It shall be given to you up to half of my kingdom. It was then she asked him to spare her life and the life of her people. Hear the heart and humble prayer of this powerful woman. If it pleases the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, and if this seems right to the king, and I am pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to revoke the letters devised by Haman to annihilate the Jewish people. For how can I endure to see the evil that will come to my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my countrymen? And her request was answered. For the wicked Haman and his evil plan were exposed to the king. And the curse spoken of in Genesis, Bereshit, would fall upon him and his ten sons. The word declares, I will bless those who bless my Jewish people, and I will curse those who curse her. The golden scepter is extended to us even now, beloved, for we who are his hidden ones have received divine grace and favor with the exquisite King of glory. Today, the words of the Father who has adopted us speak to our hearts as they did to Queen Esther. Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the King's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jewish people from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this.